Welcome to our course where we're going to be building a fun interactive application from scratch, all focused on JavaScript, DOM manipulation, element manipulation, and JavaScript functionality, and being able to apply JavaScript functionality to build an interesting application. My name is Lawrence, and I'm going to be your instructor for this course. I come to you with many years of web development experience, and I really enjoy working with JavaScript. JavaScript can be a lot of fun, and there's so much potential with what you can do with JavaScript. Its abilities are endless and produce interactive, fun applications. The scope of the upcoming lessons is focused on element manipulation and using interaction with the DOM. We're going to be showing you how you can select elements, how you can create elements, and also how you can create and update style properties of those elements, as well as introducing some useful JavaScript methods that you can utilize in order to build your own applications. HTML and CSS are not going to be covered in this course as this course is about JavaScript and DOM manipulation. They are prerequisites to this course as well as core fundamental understanding and JavaScript knowledge is also a prerequisite to this course. If you've never used JavaScript before, this course is not for you because this course is focused on building out a project and applying JavaScript to create interactive applications. Everything you see here, this is all JavaScript code. If you look at the page source code, there's nothing but JavaScript. You're gonna also need an editor to be able to write your code. And the editor that I'm using within the course is Brackets, available at Brackets.io. It's free open source editor. Most of the course, the editor's open on the left-hand side. We're typing in code. And then on the right-hand side, we can see what the code does. The browser is Chrome, which also gives us the ability to find out a little bit more information when we're opening up the Chrome debugger and select elements and see things get highlighted within the console window. This is a fast paced course with all of the source code included to get you started quickly. And I do suggest that you do try the code out for yourself and get familiar with the concepts that we're going to be presenting in the upcoming lessons. Also, help is not far away. I'm always happy to hear from you and clarify any of the content within the Q&A section of this course. So if you have any questions or comments or suggestions to make this course even better, let me know within the Q&A section. Thanks again for joining the course. And I know you're excited to get started. So next we're gonna dive right in, start writing some code. Hello and welcome. This lesson we're gonna be setting up our main block area and we're gonna be doing all of this using JavaScript. So creating an index.html page, this is gonna be used to house our script tags. And then within the script tags, this is where all the magic is gonna happen. And this is where our JavaScript is gonna take place. So first of all, we're gonna create a global object. We can just call it my block so that we can reference it from any one of the functions. And then using document, adding an event listener. So the event listener that we're listening for, and this one is gonna be listening for when the DOM content has loaded. So the event that we are listening for is DOM content loaded. And what this means is this gets invoked whenever the DOM content has loaded. So whenever all of your elements are in place, then this is when this fires off. And we can output within the console ready and try that out. And you can see that what happens here is almost instantly because we don't have a lot of HTML, of course, and it almost instantly loads and we see ready output into the console. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to build the my block object and using JavaScript. So we're going to attach an element to the page and we're going to create this element dynamically. So using the my block variable that we set up, this is a global variable, we're going to get document create element and the type of element that we're creating is gonna be a div. So when we refresh, we can output in the my block and you can see that now it's got an element inside of there. And what we wanna do with this element is we wanna append it to the HTML so that we can see it and it's visible. And we'll also add in text content into it and we'll type in hello world into it temporarily. And then lastly, what we'll do is add it to the page. So using the document body object, we're gonna append a child to the document body. And that child that we're pending is 
going to be the my block object that we just created. So that's that new freshly created element that we created. So you can see that when you do an inspect, you see that we've added in and it's been appended to the body. So it's been added in after the script tags because uh, this is the way that the append works. It adds it after any code that's already existing within the body tags. You could also move this within the head area and that way you're not going to have any script tags there in the body. Everything will be sitting within the head and the div will be created and added into the body section. So go ahead and do that and add that into your code. Set it up and listen for the event DOM content loaded. And when it loads, create an out, create a div and then add that div into your body tags. And you'll be ready to move on to the next lesson where we're going to apply some styling. So we're not just going to have hello, we'll add in some styling and all using JavaScript. So you want JavaScript? Well, you're going to get it in this lesson where we're going to be updating that element that we created in the last lesson and applying some styling to it. And I know what you're thinking. Well, it's a lot easier doing it in CSS, but that's not what you're here for. You're here to learn practice JavaScript. So selecting that my block object, applying the style value to the object. And what we can do is we can set a width. So you can set all of your styling using JavaScript, just as you would with regular styling with CSS. Next, uh, let's do style and we can set a height for it. And we'll set this one to be 100 picks as well. You can also update and add within style. And as you can see, there's a lot of options here. Anything that you can do in styling, you can do here as well. I'm going to set the background color to red. Let's refresh, see what this looks like. Also, let's update the style color and set that to white. And now let's do some more interesting ones where we can set the line height. So again, that my block object, taking the style value and then applying line height. So this will help vertically center the text content. So set that to 100 picks. And we'll also take the my block and style. And this one is the text align. So we can center align the text. So let's refresh that, see what that looks like. So now we've got our text more centered. Also, I want to be able to move this element around with JavaScript. So we need to set its style and updating its style position value to be absolute. And this will give us the ability to position it. So taking style and we can position its top position. So let's set the top position. And don't forget to add in the picks. You always do need to add in the picks. And the values are represented as string values. So it's not uh, numeric. It's always a string value with the picks attached to it. Just as you would when you're styling, adding the style property. So also a left position. So let's do this as 150. So see what it looks like now. So go ahead and try this out. Practice, get more familiar with what your options are when you're updating the style of an element. And you can also do this when you select an element from the page, but it just so happens that we want to really focus on JavaScript within this section. So we are creating an element on the fly using JavaScript, and then we can attach all of those properties and values when we've got that element that we're selecting. And this element is always going to be available in the my block variable and this is global so we can reference it and we can update any of these values anywhere within our code so if we have a function if we want to move it we can update its style position of top and left and that will effectively move the element to a different spot and I'll show you how to do that in the upcoming lesson this lesson we're going to update some of the properties of that object that we created and update its positioning top and left position using functions. So let's refresh, make it bigger. And when we output the my block element, we can see that we've got that my block element. And if we want to get its left position, we can use offset left, which will return its left position. And as well, we can use offset top to get its position off of the top. And remember, we did set these within the variables here where we've got the top of 100 and we've got the left of 150. So that means that we can use this. And if we create a function that says go left, we can update the position of our element. So selecting, uh, we'll create a temporary position value where we're going to use the my block element and then use offset left 
to get its left position. Then taking that value, we can update that value of temp and we can equal temp plus temp and add 50 to it. And then lastly, let's update the my block and we'll take its style position, its left position and equal it to whatever temp and don't forget the picks because this is expecting a string value. So now when we refresh and if I type in a function and we say go left, you can see that it goes to the left. And we can do the same thing to go to the right and we can also do up and down. So if you wanna pause the video and give it a try, you can add that in and I'll show you the solution. So the same thing that we did to go left, we can do to go to right. And it's almost very similar if we go up where we're getting the offset top position and going up, so we're subtracting and we're just updating its top position. And then going down is gonna be the opposite of going up, of course. So going down, we're gonna add 50 and the rest is gonna be the same. So now we've got a series of functions where we can actually maneuver our elements. So if we wanna go up, we can go up. We can move this element to the right by invoking the function go right. Actually, that one went left. So that one subtracted and I just gotta reverse these. So let's try that one more time. So go, we've got go right function and makes it go right. We also have a go left function, makes it go left. We have go up function, which is gonna move it up. And then lastly, we have the last option, which was go down and invoking that function moves the element down. Go ahead and try this out, add that into your code, have some fun with it, move it around, uh, try out some of the different functions and coming up next, extend on this and build this application to listen to keyboard clicks and then run the functions accordingly. So that's still all to come in the upcoming lessons.